Hey, just put that down. No. <laughs> All right, it's time for dinner. You've got to put that down. <laughs> no, I'm setting a clear boundary that I'm not going to put it down. <laughs> we promised you this episode for a long time. Here we are with boundaries. Real life for real families. Hurts, habits, and hangups happen in every family. Jerry and I are here with tools to help you trust God, clean house, and tell the truth to ramp up the joy in your family. You have what it takes. It's time to become sober on purpose for, for his, his purpose. purpose. No. Boundaries. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't even, I, don't, I don't even really want to talk about them. Why not? Because I'm really bad at it. Okay, well, then you better set a clear boundary that you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's not fair. That's so not fair. All right, well, let, let's just, I suggest that we just look this demon right in the eye and we talk about boundaries. What? Why wouldn't you want to talk about it? Because you're so bad at it? What's the problem with talking about things that you're bad at? Why would I want to talk about things that I'm bad at? I'd rather talk about things that I'm good at. Because people do it all the time. People always are showing expertise in things that they have no experience uh, with. I have plenty of experience with it. I just don't ever feel like I do it right. Okay, well, we can talk about that. What What are boundaries, I guess? Do you know you're, you're good at defining them? My my key for boundaries, and this is where I think a lot of people get stuck, especially helpers, savers, and rescuers. A boundary is something that you can control. And this was really brought home to me many, many years ago. I went to my al meeting and I said, ladies, I need help. I can't make Jerry come home by 11 o'clock at night. I know he's done working at 11 o'clock at night, but he's not coming home at 11 o'clock at night. And they looked at me and they said, oh, honey, you can't make that man do anything. That's not a real boundary. That was such an eye opener for me. The boundary that I could set was the kids and I were going to have dinner at a certain time. If he wasn't, he was always welcome to show up for dinner, but if he wasn't home, then I was not going to get angry. I could also set a boundary that I was going to be in bed by nine o'clock because I had to be up um, taking care of the kids at six and I wasn't going to go looking for him and I was going to turn off the phone and I wasn't going to worry about where he was. And so my group, and we'll have to talk about a group conscious, my group absolved me of any responsibility for Jerry after nine o'clock at night. That was a clear boundary that I set for myself. That's good. And I think that's an excellent definition of boundaries in uh, a program or, or, you know, an emotional uh, recovery program basis. But let's make it a little bit more tangible. In the physical world, a boundary would be a fence or a wall or... A um, uh, house. This is my house as opposed to your house, right? Yeah, a property line. But but particularly, you know, so a, a, let's say a very well-marked property line. It could be a wall between the United States and Mexico. It's not a wall. <laughs> it's steel slats. It's just a boundary. It's going to be an excellent boundary. Anyway, you, that's let's, let, let's try and make it a little bit more understandable on the physical realm. I mean, this is... A clear thing saying, don't pass this line. This is this is a line. It's well marked. It's very obvious what it is. Um, maybe if you approach that boundary, there are recordings that come out saying you are approaching the boundary. Proceed no farther. That's what a physical boundary is. And an emotional boundary is very similar, only it's not represented in the physical world. You have to speak up for an emotional boundary. A boundary is something only you, you can only control it. You can't control other people's boundaries, but you can respect other people's boundaries. Yes, like I have a boundary that says you will earn at least $3,000 a month. See, no, that's that's a joke. That's not a boundary, right? 
that's maybe something that I want. But a boundary would say, you know, if you were to have an affair with me, then I would leave the marriage. And I'm not saying that that's the case. Let's hope we don't have to experiment with that. But that would be a personal boundary that I would set where I would say, okay, well, I've set this line up, you know, and, and if it was to be crossed, I would take this action because of it. Well, and then there are problems. Their boundaries raise several problems. One, trying to control other people's boundaries, which is often what the saver and the rescuer does. They will say, okay, you can't control yourself, so I'm going to do that for you. That doesn't help anybody. That's driving around at night, looking at all the bars, trying to figure out where your husband is, and then taking him home. That is not a boundary. Yeah. So let's def- let's give some examples of what boundaries are. So a boundary says... I am not going to serve dinner after 6 p.m. at night. Yes, good That one. is something I can control. Or I am not going to get up and take care of the dog at 3 a.m. in the morning. That's your job. <laughs> yes, that's good. <laughs> or I am going to bring in X amount of dollars and we will have to work with that budget because I'm not going beyond that in caring for my family. Yeah, I like those. But those are all things that I can control. Now, I can also not to have hidden boundaries. If I say to you, well, you should have known that you needed to come home and put the dishes away and clean up the living room and take care of the car, those types of things. To, to put those hidden expectations on you and then call them a boundary is just way out of bounds. Right. It's it, For example, you're, you're hiking through the desert and it's just sand dune after sand dune after sand dune. And all of a sudden, all of these guys on camels come galloping up and they say, hey, you're you're on our land. You're trespassing. You say, well, how how did I know? I mean, if I had known that this was your land, I would have gone around it. But there's no clear boundary here. And we have to do that in our emotional landscape, too. Um, one of the things that I have set as a boundary is if somebody is yelling at me, I my clear boundary that I've set for myself is I won't engage in that, or at least I'll try. My, you know, I, I've set a boundary. I'm not great at maintaining this boundary, but I, I will not engage in the discussion. I will just remain silent or excuse myself and, and say, look, I would like to take this this up at a later date or over email or how about we talk about this at three o'clock on Thursday, something like that, which is a boundary he can control. He cannot control the person yelling at him, but he can remove himself from the situation. Then at a quiet time, he could go back to that person and say, Hey, I want to work this out with you. or I want to figure this out in my life. Yelling is not something, and it's not a way that we can work this out. And he's setting a boundary. What I'm talking about with hidden boundaries is I may do something that offends somebody or that hurts their feelings, but just like the camels in the desert, unless that person says something to me, I may not know that I have hurt their feelings or offended them. And that's very hard sometimes to speak up and say, hey, when you yell at me, it I just completely shut down and I can't help problem solve and I'm having an issue. And if we, I know you may be angry. If we could take some time apart, then maybe we could come back and work this out together. But I'm not going to stick around if you're going to yell at me. Now, if you're yelling at the person and telling them that, you're kind of out of balance with what you're sharing. But those hidden boundaries often get us in trouble because we've got these hurt feelings and things are happening in our emotional landscape, but we're not sharing with the other person how they could do this in a way that we could continue to work with them. That's good. I and I, I like that. I, I just thought of an example where, so I'm a manager and I, I've got a lot of reports. And for example, let's say I hired somebody and I kind of was just, Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. This person, you know, at 6 a.m., this person shows up at 6.20 a.m. And I'm, I'm stewing about it. You know, first day at work, they're late. I don't say anything. Let's roll it back a little bit. They show up at 6.20. I say, hey, what happened? Oh, well, you know, um, there was some traffic on the way in. The roads were slippery. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, make sure I got here safe. Oh, okay. Okay. That, yeah. 
Next day they show up at 6:10. I'm I'm now I'm really angry and I say, "Hey, you know, what happened? That's that's two days late in a row." And they say, "Uh, well, you know, uh, I slept in a little bit and um, you know, and and I I'm embarrassed about it, but you know, it's just one of those things." And then I immediately go and I write them up and we do a document and on the document I I go to the third level, which is, you know, uh, final warning. And it says, if this, if this happens again, you know, you'll be terminated. Now that's kind of an overreaction considering the fact that I did not state that this punctuality was a very clear boundary for me. Right. So if I'm going to be very aggravated with one of my employees showing up late, well, I had better talk to them, you know, before they show up on day one and be like, look, punctuality is very important here. We take that very seriously. It's bad for morale. And if you were to show up and if you do have any tardiness, there will be consequences for it. Probably documentation. Make sure you take that as a high priority. If you have to be here early, be here early just to avoid being late. Now that would be a much clearer boundary. Oftentimes the person themselves, you or the person who is causing the issue may not realize they have walked across a hidden boundary that can blow up like a landmine, maybe in their family or in their culture or in their previous workplace. This was all acceptable behavior. And that's a key is self-awareness and knowing your own boundaries. And sometimes you don't know them until you walk across somebody else's or they walk across yours. And boundaries are only things that you can control. If you are trying to set a boundary for somebody else, you've crossed the other side of the street. You're not working on yourself anymore. It is completely acceptable, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually to say, these are my boundaries. Jerry and I are very clear on the fact that when Tiny gets tired, she gets really cranky. It is time to put me to bed because all my walls start throwing up, all my anger starts coming up, and it is a clear boundary for me that I can't make decisions after a certain point at night. I just, I cannot focus anymore. I will make very poor decisions and I will get really, really angry. So I have set that as a boundary of one, I don't do my finances at night and two, I don't try and make serious decisions at night. Other people may be different. They, they may be night owls and this is the time that they can do anything. Finances, make major decisions, run the world, make these high plans. It is your responsibility to speak up and say, this does not work well for me. Maybe even I'm not exactly sure why, but let's tackle this at another time. And so setting that boundary actually helps the relationship move more smoothly, just like a physical boundary helps the relationship move more smoothly. Yeah, I mean, healthy relationships, whether they be with a friend or a wife or whatever, you know, they have clear boundaries. It doesn't mean that no one will ever push on them or cross them, but it means that you know where you stand, you know how far you can venture. Like a, a child playing in the yard on a busy street, you know, they if there's a if there's a fence going around that yard, they know they can go right up to that fence and you know, as long as they're not trying to push on it and and break through it, they know they can be right up on that edge and just do their own thing. They're fine, they're safe. And emotional relationships work like that as well. Well, and bad boundaries cause an enormous amount of turmoil. Jerry always says to me that all all broken relationships come back to bad boundaries. I would say in this I was I helped I was told this by one of the greatest spiritual advisors that I've ever worked with. And I didn't disagree with it when he said it, but the more I think about it, the more accurate I think this is. There's no such thing as codependency, there's no such thing as addiction. There's no such thing as self-destructive behavior. It's all just bad boundaries. And, you know, it seemed overly simplistic when he said it, but I, I couldn't I couldn't refute it. And the more I think about it, the more I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, a lot of times, particularly with addiction, these are personal boundaries that we're crossing. All right, I'm just going to have one drink. And then that becomes, you know, 11. And I, I'm going to make sure that I leave by 
by 7.30 so I'm not late. And then next thing you know, it's 7.50. And these are these are personal boundaries that we're allowing ourselves to cross. Um, bad marriage, if he hits me one more time, I'm going to leave. And, you know, and we don't leave or that you can you can expand on this. And, and if I think you'll find that what I found to be true is is true also. And that's where I get so frustrated with myself is there are many things in my life that other people are not causing for me. I was just cleaning up downstairs and I'm thinking, why are they always watching the movie? And I'm always in the kitchen cleaning up and working this out and making sure it is all put together for tomorrow morning. The reason is because that's what I care about. I care more about coming down to a clean kitchen than sitting down and watching the movie. The issue is not that they are not helping. They came in and got their own dinners. They came in and made their own lunches. They came in and got themselves situated. But I need that kitchen clean for me to do it in the morning. So I either need to set a boundary with myself of, no, I'm going to go enjoy the movie and I'm not going to worry about this, or this is more important to me than that, and so I'm not going to take it out on everybody else for having started the movie because I used to make them wait to start the movie, but then I would be puttering around in the kitchen and they would get frustrated with me too. And the other place that I'm really bad with boundaries is, as Jerry was saying, with time. I have a problem with historical time. I think, oh, I can get all of this done and still be there on time, when really the truth is I can't. And unless I focus and process, eliminate things, I can't be there on time. And then I'm angry with myself. So those are boundaries that I'm not able to keep for myself, which again, feed into other issues of poor self-esteem and control issues, and then getting angry at the outside world for not functioning in the way that I want it to. So it comes back to a bad boundary, a personal bad boundary situation for myself. Yep. Honestly, I think that's very succinct. I don't really have much more to share on this topic uh, other than good luck trying to pull it off. Well, but how do you develop good boundaries? Uh, well, you, you, you maintain them. You, you water them. You, you repair them. You, you walk the property line. You make sure that you know where it is. You define it. All right, exactly. This is my boundary. I, I will let this person go this far, but no farther. I will have an argument with my wife, but my boundary is as soon as the first character attack happens, I am not engaging in this discussion any longer. I haven't personally set that one because otherwise we wouldn't get anything done. I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but like you, you need to know exactly what it is because it, it can't be a moving boundary because then nobody knows where it is. Obviously, the goalpost stays in the same place you know you can't just move it depending where you are and if you do move it you can move it here's the thing i guess boundaries can be moved but darn it they better be well defined and you better let the person know that this boundary is now here and that's the other thing i was going to say is you don't have to set all your boundaries up front lay down these rules make everybody follow them that's still very controlling behavior you can set boundaries when you need them. And as you learn more about yourself, you can decide on those boundaries. Just like me, I used to do finances at night and then I wonder why I couldn't sleep or I'd be angry going to bed or all those types of things. Then I decided that just not was not a good process for me at night. But it took me a little while to get, get to that. And it's like the hungry, angry, lonely, tired, the halt statement was if you are getting frustrated, you could say, mm, am I hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or is a boundary of mine being crossed? Have we stepped through something that I'm uncomfortable with and I haven't realized it? And there are major boundaries, like the your physical boundary, like abuse boundaries, sexual abuse boundaries. Those are things where somebody has said, I don't care if you have a boundary. Those are more universal boundaries. I don't care if you have a boundary. I am going to break it. Yes, that's an excellent point. And I think that deserves a little bit of talk because just because we have a boundary set doesn't mean that 
somebody can't come through it or over it or around it or in the case of uh, steel slats on the border under it or we, we can't control other people like Tanya said these are things within our control so all we can control is how we respond to this so like let's say I've set a boundary that says do not call me after 9 p.m. at 9 10 my phone is ringing obviously I can't stop that from happening what I can do is I can block that caller or I can not answer the phone or I can tell that person okay look if you do this again because I know I was hyper clear with you that don't call me after nine. If you call me after nine, I'm blocking your phone number again. You know what I mean? Yes. Boundaries are things that you can set when you need them. You can move them. It takes some weighing out on whether that is worth it. But moving boundaries can also cause other problems because then they become hidden boundaries again. Well, like I touched on earlier, you can move boundaries, but you better darn well be really clear about where they are now and, and proactive about it. Yes, we are currently raising a teenager and soon we'll be raising two. And he is age appropriately pushing all the boundaries to see where they are, where we're gonna respond. And quite frankly, we don't have them all set up yet. So today, for example, as a practical example, our 13-year-old asked for a soda with, with dinner. Was it 47 times or is it 48? I lost <laughs> I count. Oh, no, it was but, a lot. But at one point, Tanya said, don't ask me again. Now, I think a clearer boundary would have been, if you ask me again, this is what's going to happen. I did that. Oh, I did finally, you? I was thinking about that, and I finally said, if you ask me again, this is what's going to happen. You will not have a soda for two weeks. I will mark it on the calendar, and that will be it. That That's great, because that's a cleared boundary, right? Now, we can't control him from asking, but we can control how we respond to the ask. Let's say he asked for the 49th time, then Tanya said, fine, whatever, and gave him a soda. That clearly is not a well-maintained boundary, right? Because what right. we've just trained with the 13-year-old or with our boss or with our employee or with our whatever, okay, well, I have to ask 49 times before I get it. It's, if, if you ask enough, it will happen. What we know is if you cross your own personal boundaries enough, you will live in cognitive dissonance and that sets up a whole nother issue of how are you going to maintain your personhood and live almost displaced from who you would like to be integrity wise. To thine own self be true. Right. And that's one thing that we learn from Christ too is that he never crosses another person's boundaries waits to be asked, waits to be invited, waits to be part of your life. There is no force used, no coercion used. Love it. Love it. I think I think Jesus was the first true libertarian. <laughs> Maybe not the first, but definitely he personified the idea of of voluntary human interaction. And let's be clear, religion can be very coercive. Religion can push your boundaries. Religion can cross your boundaries. Religion can be very damaging. But if you read the life of Christ, how he selected his disciples, how he selected the people who were around him, how he spent his time with people, he did not go in and say, you must do this. You need to behave like this. With that in mind, we're talking about setting our own boundaries. So clearly, can we really set a boundary that somebody else can't sin against some some third party or else I'm going to have to intervene? I don't I don't think we can with good moral code set boundaries for other people either. We can only set boundaries for how they affect our lives personally. And and we have to be clear that we can't look at this on the macro scale to say, well, if this person was to not wear their seatbelt, then it's possible that they 
hit a pothole, bounced out of their seat and drove across the lane and hit me. So therefore I have a boundary that everybody else has to wear their seatbelt. I mean, that's, that's a stretch in my opinion. Well, and, and we must be clear, this is about adults. You do have some responsibility for setting boundaries for, for children. We do put fences in the yard. We do say this is important that you don't talk to strangers. Yeah. And or What where, you're doing is you're modeling behavior for them to set boundaries for themselves. Yes, and I agree with Tanya wholeheartedly. So I couldn't say to the gym teacher at the elementary school, hey, uh, I have a boundary that when you're riding your bike to school, you have to wear a helmet. Because if you don't wear a helmet, you're setting a bad example for my children. And therefore, I have a boundary that you have to wear your helmet. That's not a healthy boundary. That's not an appropriate boundary. Nor do I have the right to set boundaries for other people. But can I say that to my 13-year-old kid? You know, absolutely. I have, you, know, you have to wear your helmet if you're going to use your bike. And if you don't, here's what's going to happen. We do want to be clear that it is a little different for children. You do have a responsibility for them. But just like Christ, it is a responsibility out of love, not out of harm. It is an intent to model behavior for them that you would like them to uh, like them to use for themselves. Do I did I just say that I have to wear a helmet now? To, is that what is that what's you happening here? You wear a helmet here? skiing for that reason. Yeah, but- you don't ride your bike. It's because you set a boundary that I had to wear a helmet. As- <laughs> <laughs> no, I just bought you. I just bought you a helmet for Christmas. That's all that happened that first year. And then you decided it was warmer, and so you wore it. Yeah, that's true. And now everybody wears it because it's just kind of dumb not to. Yep, that's also well, true. Well, you you set a boundary for them with the dirt bikes of you cannot start your dirt bike without your helmet on. Yeah, something like that. You can't even move your dirt bike without your helmet on because that's when accidents happen is, is right around the trailer or right at the beginning is when you're peeling out and stuff. Yeah, I think this is a good episode. What do you guys think about boundaries? Did we miss anything? Hey, I hope you guys liked our podcast about boundaries. Uh, I'd love to hear if you have anything to add or counter in what we had to say. I am going to set a boundary that if we don't get our 30 po- uh, reviews in the first quarter, that I am not going to engage in any more podcasting. Ah, you can't do that. I am setting a clear boundary. Well, really, if we don't get 30, then I have to do it all by myself? Well, we talked about how boundaries can move. I'm just <laughs> setting a boundary. Oh, <laughs> you're a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> really, we need 30, because you really do want to hear what Jerry has to say. He's brilliant. <laughs> all right. That's... All right, so you can always find us at thejoyousfamily.com. That's our website. You can also find us at facebook.com forward slash sober on purpose, same name as the podcast. There will be show notes on boundaries, and there are some great books that we did not mention here that we can add to that, as well as please, please give us a review so I don't have to do this by myself. We need a review on iTunes. So what you need to do is scroll down to where it says available episodes. Go just below that. It will offer you the opportunity to review. You click on that. You click on the five stars and you add a few words, questions, anything. We'd love to hear your thoughts on boundaries and where you've had trouble setting boundaries and where you've been able to maintain your boundaries. We especially want to hear it around teenagers. Sure. (laughs) So we look forward to seeing you in the Facebook group over on thejoyousfamily.com. And you can always email me at T-A-N-Y-A at the J-O-Y-O-U-S family.com. We thank you for listening and we look forward to talking to you again next week. Bye-bye.